welcome back to the Amateur Radio Technician License Course. You know, one gets a feeling of uh, accomplishment when you set up your amateur radio rig for the first time. And when you make your first contact, it uh, just gives you a warm fuzzies all over. Um, even if you think you can't really work with tools or you're not handy at all, knowing a few basic concepts that's uh, required to, uh, to pass this exam will help you accomplish uh, many things. Uh, some you, you don't even realize you can do. And who knows, by virtue of uh, learning all of this, you may be able to help somebody else along the way. And uh, if you set up somebody else's station or help them or give them advice, that'll even give you a greater uh, feeling of accomplishment. Anyway, are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started. This is Lesson 7, Part 2. I'm Gary Stevens, KE2GS, your instructor. In this uh, section, we're going to go over antenna measurements and troubleshooting, uh, subjects such as uh, measuring uh, standing wave ratios, uh, using dummy loads, uh, coaxial cables, and the causes of feed line failures. So a dummy load is basically a station uh, accessory that allows you to test uh, or, and align your uh, transmitter uh, without actually transmitting or sending a signal out over the air. Often dummy loads are simply a resistor suspended in a uh, solution of uh, mineral oil, uh, such as in this type of can. For the exam, know that the purpose of a, a dummy load is to prevent transmitting signals over the air when making tests. The antenna analyzer uh, examines two components of uh, your antenna. One is the impedance of your antenna and the other is the reactive component. The nice thing about an antenna analyzer is you can uh, get your antenna spot on without actually energizing it with your radio and risk damaging it. For the exam, know that an antenna analyzer can be used to determine if an antenna is resonant at a desired operating frequency. Another piece of test equipment is the uh, SWR meter. It allows you to check and make sure that uh, your load is matched to your transmission line. For the examination, know in general terms, the standing wave ratio, SWR, is a measure of how well a load is matched to a transmission line. You also need to know that the ratio of 1 to 1 is perfect. Uh, you'll never get perfect, but uh, the closer you can get to one-to-one, -to -one, the better. Uh, and for the examination, know that an SWR reading of one-to-one -one indicates a perfect impedance match between the antenna and the feed line. In a lot of the older equipment, uh, an imp uh, mismatch in your SWR could result in a burn-up final stage of your transmitter. Uh, Fortunately, a lot of manufacturers uh, remedied this uh, with some protection circuitry. For the exam, know that most solid-state amateur radio transmitters reduce power output as SWR increases to protect the output of the amplifier transistors. So, as I said, a one-to-one uh, -one ratio of SWR is excellent. Uh, One-to-four is very bad. Uh, you can notice on uh, this particular meter in this slide that uh, the orange or, or red is uh, uh, warning you that you're out of range. So for the exam, know that the SWR reading of 4 to 1 indicates an impedance mismatch. So in electronics, excessive power is dissipated as heat. Uh, which uh, I'm sure you've observed on the uh, inside a computer. A lot of times there's a heat sink with a fan over it to get rid of that heat. Uh, for the exam note, when power is lost in a feed line, it is converted into heat. A lot of the SWR meters today are also power meters that uh, show the forward and reverse uh, directions. Uh, so, uh, uh, for the exam, know that a directional wattmeter is an instrument other than an SWR meter that you could use to determine if a feed line and antenna are properly matched. One of the most common uh, 
reasons for failure in coaxial cable is that moisture simply gets in and it causes corrosion and it uh, just goes downhill from there. Uh, for the exam, know that moisture contamination is the most common cause for failure of coaxial cable. We all know how sun can damage our skin and it's uh, usually uh, blamed on the ultraviolet radiation. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that the outer jacket of a coaxial cable should be resistant to ultraviolet light because ultraviolet light can damage the jacket and allow water to enter in the cable, as we know in the previous slide. You can imagine what would happen to this uh, air core coaxial cable if water get in there. It could uh, freeze, expand, crack. Uh, corrode, all kinds of things. So for the exam, know that uh, the disadvantage of air core coaxial cable when compared to foam and solid dielectric types is that it requires special techniques to prevent water absorption. All dummy loads are submerged in oil. Uh, some of them are uh, simply just use uh, resistors. Some uh, have heat sinks, some don't. Uh, depends on the uh, current load. Uh, but for the exam, know that a dummy load consists of a non-inductive resistor and a heat sink. In this section, we're going to go over the basic repair and testing of uh, equipment, uh, which involves soldering, uh, using basic test uh, instruments, and connecting a voltmeter, amp meter, or ohm meter to a, a circuit. While most of us may be familiar with what a voltmeter is, um, just know for the exam that uh, you would use a voltmeter to measure electric potential or electromotive force. And the correct way to uh, use a voltmeter is to uh, put it in parallel with the circuit. Although this is a series circuit, we're measuring the voltage uh, parallel to the battery and parallel to the uh, light bulb. So for the exam, know that the correct way to connect a voltmeter to a circuit is in parallel with the circuit. While well, we learned for in the previous slide that uh, for voltage we have to be in parallel with the circuit, if we're measuring current we need to be in series with the circuit. Um, for the exam, uh, we need to know that a simple ammeter is connected to a circuit in series with the circuit as illustrated in this illustration. For the exam, we also need to know that an ammeter is the instrument or an instrument that's used to measure electric current. There's also a device that allows us to measure resistance. It's called an ohmmeter. Uh, a lot of times they're bundled into what's called a multimeter. This particular one is uh, uh, bundled with a capacitance meter. Uh, but for the exam, know that an ohm meter is an instrument used to measure resistance. I have seen it many times. A, a person is uh, testing equipment and they're in a hurry or they get distracted and they attempt to measure voltage uh, with it on the resistance scale. Uh, the resistance uh, ohmmeter ha portion has a battery, so you put a battery with a battery, you can imagine what happens. So know for the exam that attempting to measure a voltage when using a resistance setting might damage the multimeter, like this burnt resistor. So if you can look closely enough at these uh, multimeters, uh, you can measure uh, volt DC voltage, AC voltage, uh, small amounts of current, and measure resistance. Uh, so for the exam, note that uh, voltage and resistance are measurements that are commonly made using a multimeter. There are various types of solder on the market. Uh, there's silver solder, lead solder, and there's uh, tin solder, and there's various uh, percentages of uh, tin and, and lead. Uh, but for the exam, you need to know that rosin core solder is the best type for radio and electronic use. The rosin core and solder is uh, also called flux, and usually what happens in manufacturing is if there's not enough flux or there's not enough heat, 
uh, you, it creates a cold solder joint. And the characteristic of a cold solder joint is a grainy and dull surface. So for the exam, know that the characteristic appearance of a cold solder joint is a grainy or dull surface. If you recall in our discussion about capacitors in a previous uh, lesson, uh, they store energy in an electric field. And because an ohm meter uses a, a battery or voltage uh, to measure resistance, uh, what happens is sometimes a large capacitor can be charged slowly by the uh, multimeter and actually affect the uh, reading uh, on your multimeter. So for the exam, know that when an ohm meter is connected across an unpowered circuit, initially indicating a low resistance and then shows increasingly resistance uh, with time, uh, what's probably happened is the circuit contains a large capacitor. As we discussed earlier, um, you know, when you have a uh, powered circuit and you try to take a resistance measurement, uh, it doesn't work so well. And what I like to do is unplug the, uh, the radio or the rig. Uh, so for the exam, know that a precaution that uh, should be taken uh, when measuring the circuit resistance of an ohmmeter is to ensure that the circuit is not powered. Meters are really useful. They do have limitations on to how high the voltage they can measure. Uh, so there's a device called the high voltage probe that can be used uh, to measure the higher uh, voltages. So for the exam, know that a precaution that should be taken when measuring high voltages with a voltmeter is to ensure that the voltmeter leads are rated for use at the voltages to be measured. This concludes lesson seven. I hope you're enjoying the series, and if you are, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Until next time, never stop learning.